What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 4 of Replicating Ranieri here in Football Manager 2016. Today it's a Livecom doubleheader against Southampton and Sunderland. If you didn't see last episode, go check it out. And yeah, let's see what we can get done today. We've got the home game against Southampton to start. And uh, the away game against Sunderland. Worth noting, today we actually play on a Sunday. I didn't realise this until the time, but Spurs played their game in hand, and that was that game, of course, against Liverpool. And they lost 3-2, so a result going out in our favour. Hopefully now we can capitalise off that. Worth noting, Spurs' next game, as I mentioned at the end of last episode, is against Manchester United. I'm hoping, really, that... Um, that they'll slip up again and we can, you know, extend that gap a little bit more. Of course, a win today would make us move four points clear, but they would still have that game in hand. Um, and it's worth noting, you know, Arsenal, whilst they've been a little bit iffy of late, they are only one win away from kind of leapfrogging us as well. And uh, City certainly not out of the title fight either. It really has kind of kept very close going into the last seven games here. Either way, in terms of our team, we're going to stick with a 4-4-2. I do feel like we're going to stay with the same system, at least to begin with that we did, of course, use against Palace. I feel like we were a little bit unlucky. Granted, I think the tactical changes definitely helped us in the game, but I, I don't know. To not get a result last episode, or at least a point, was pretty disappointing in that second game. Either way, you can see Jamie Vardy on a fairly lengthy run without scoring goals. I mentioned that last episode. We had the talk with him. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to try and encourage and I'm going to be kind, but really I'm getting a little bit worried about Jamie Vardy's lack of goals. Anyway, looking at the team that we're playing against here, it's of course Southampton. They are playing a 4-4-1-1. Kind of feel like that suits us quite a lot. They've got a very good team, Southampton, particularly defensively, but uh, the pace out wide of Tadic and Mane. Well, Tadic isn't exactly fast, but the technical giftedness of uh, Tadic and of course the raw pace of Mane, that, that's got to be things that we respect out wide. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Mares and Albrighton get on today. I feel like we are going to need them to contribute at the back, uh, really, to, to help us out in this game. Either way, we need goals. That is something that we have just fundamentally lacked in recent games. I don't feel like that's for a lack of trying. We really have, you know, had a lot of opportunities. It's simply a case of us finding the back of the net a little bit more. I feel like there's only so much I can do as a manager in terms of encouraging attacking football, in terms of talking to the players who aren't scoring. You know, I can play around with the roles all I want, but the fundamental factor is if the player himself isn't performing, it doesn't really matter what you do with him. And I feel like we need we need Vardy to come big. We need Vardy and maybe even Ochoa to start banging in some goals for a Shinji Okazaki, of course, out for the rest of the year. That's such a massive void, and I didn't think I'd say that at the start of this series. You know, I didn't think Shinji Okazaki was the player who I'd most sorely miss if we got, if he got injured, but he has been just a massive miss for us. And all you can see, looking at this game here, it's been a an underwhelming start to the game, I think it's fair to say. It's currently 0-0. And, uh, well, as I said, underwhelming, I think, is the, the optimal word for it. Neither team has had a shot on target. We do break that duck now, getting a goal with 30 minutes on the clock. But all in all, this is just, it's a slow game with not a lot happening. And I don't want to say it's looking like a 1-0, but it's looking like one of those kind of games where it might just be decided by the one goal. In fact, we might not even get a highlight in the first half to really epitomise how this game's gone so far. That said, late set piece, Drinkwater gets it away, but, well, there might still be a chance here. Pele, and, well, I'll, I'll eat my words. Graziano Pele scores two seconds after the ref should have blown his whistle. That's a disgraceful act. But um, we've had this lapse of concentration right at the end of the first half, and it's cost us. At this point here, where we get the set piece away, you don't want everyone chasing the ball. You want people to find their men, push out as a united team to kind of create an offside trap, potentially. We've not done that. We've left Tadic out wide. Players move over to try and cover, and Graziano Pelle, one of the best players in the air on the pitch, says, thank you very much for the free header, and, uh, well, he punishes us. And uh, I'm going to tell the players I'm just not happy with how they've performed. I think, like, I feel like to start this half, we're actually going to do something, and the thing we're going to do is change our wide midfielders onto wide midfielders' attack. Um, part of me wants to play Vardy in a slightly different role as a defensive forward, just so maybe he drops a little bit deeper, but also kind of hassles and harasses the defence. I must be honest, it's a role that I've not really utilised at all in FM, the defensive forward, but it's a, a role which at least allegedly Vardy can play reasonably well, so let's give him a chance there. Maybe that chance, that kind of change can immediately work wonders for us. Although that said, we look like we need to be the team getting ready to defend. Mane out on this right-hand side. We've been spread very wide here by Southampton. Mane whips in the ball. Gets cleared to Wanmi. Now with Tadic. 
Ryan Bertrand in on the action. Fuchs gets rid of it, but only as far as Mane, who might get the ball back into the box. It's Pele, and Robert, who fouls him, probably pulled his hair. It's a penalty to Southampton, and again, an element of, I don't want to say misfortune, because you make your own look, but we need a save. Kasper Schmeichel with the save, though, and it, well, we could have gone two goals down there, but Kasper, Kasper Schmeichel in goal has it, uh, well, just gone huge for us right there. A fantastic save, keeps us in this game. Southampton coming out the better of the two teams, I think it's fair to say, in this half. That said, we have got the ball here. Can we make something happen? We need a goal. We don't get goals, though. We don't get them in an abundance. We need some. Fox crosses it. It's gone in. I mean, I feel bad celebrating it, but we've needed a goal from somewhere. And Christian Fox, an unlikely supplier of the goal, his first ever in a Leicester shirt. The left back just drifts forward. Didn't get a goal in real, in real life in the football season. I mean, it's a cross that's gone in. It looks insane. We'll go with it. I mean, we needed a goal from somewhere. I said we needed some luck. I said that we haven't, you know, not tried to score. And, uh, well, we, we've been, I want to say we've been rewarded there, but that feels a little bit disingenuous, perhaps. Either way, I'm actually going to make a change here, and it's actually going to be Vardy who comes off again. He's he's just been underwhelming. Jeffrey Schlupp, get on the pitch. I think we'll also go for our standard change of bringing on Damari Gray, but actually today I'm going to bring him on on the right-hand side for Mares, who really is struggling for fitness. I must be honest, Mares out wide really hasn't made a lot happen for us today. I feel like a tactical change is something I could look to do, but given how... I don't want to say limited our team is, but I feel like our team is very much kind of restricted to really playing a 4-4-2 if we really want to play all of our best players. But in that 4-4-2, I do question Mares' contribution out wide. I do feel like in FM, there's not really a role for Mares and how he plays in real life. Either way, set-piece Robert Hoof, who gave away the penalty... Not able to do a lot, although Simpson back into the box. Drink water. We need a moment of magic. There's 19 minutes left. A goal here could put us in a great position. Albright and Schlupp. Jeffrey Schlupp scores again. And we are going up, up, up. It's 2-1. He's got more goals than Vardy. Actually, I don't know if he has got more goals than Vardy. It feels like he has. That's a big one for us. Jeffrey Schlupp. Take a bow. On as a sub Nice little bit of link-up play. Albright and first time pass. Delightful. And Schlupp just hammers it into the roof of the net from seven yards out. That's a lovely goal. And, well, you can't complain about that one little bit. Jeffrey Schlupp, the hero, the unlikely saviour. Yeah, that said, I mean, I was about to change to kind of standard because I felt like we needed to make a tactical change to play a little bit more conservative. Southampton might now punish us for my lack of kind of immediate changes. Pele with the shot. Schmeichel tips it around the post. Let's change the counter here. Let's just drop everyone a little bit deeper. I don't feel like we need to make any kind of unnecessary risks here. We don't really need... Our fullbacks pushing on forward now. We can kind of let our, um, you know, more attacking players contribute in that regard. I want us to hold firm at the back. That said, we have got to defend this set piece initially. Tadic sends it over. Schmeichel actually with a save tipped it over. And well, if in the last game we deserve to beat Palace, I feel like it's fair to say in this game Southampton perhaps deserve to certainly not be losing this game. That said, they might still make something happen here. Pele, I mean, I don't know how Schmeichel saved it, but he has done. I'm not going to complain. We just need to see out this game now. There is five minutes left. We're playing on counter. There's four minutes left now. Let's not give away a needless goal now. Let's play it around the back if we need to. Let's not do what Wes Morgan's just done there. Rodriguez bringing the ball forward. Hoof heads it away. All bright and up to Ochoa. I mean, Jeffrey Schlupp has pace. He might want another here. That is a terrible ball by Ochoa. Anywhere but there. Four minutes left. A goal for Southampton, you know, would be a real killer blow. Although Ochoa might be through here. Can he make it certain? He can't. He misses a sitter. Simpson inside to Kante now. Out wide with Damari Gray, the sub, who gets dispossessed. Classy now being involved in the play. I think he's just come on off the bench. And, well, that was a chance to make it 3-1. And with not a lot of time left in this game, I'm worried. There's a minute and a half here. There might still be a chance one way or the other. And it's actually Southampton with the ball bringing it forward. Pele tries to spread out wide. Damari Gray, nice composed play there by the youngster. Interesting pass inside, putting Wes Morgan under a lot of pressure. And now they're on the attack. Pele shoots and Rodriguez scores. It's 2-2. Oh, dear. What has happened? I've panicked and clicked the screen. I apologise for bringing up a pop-up there. But what... I mean, there's an air of inevitability about it. Why is our play... Oh, Schmeichel. I want to blame Schmeichel, but he saved the penalty. He's made some big saves in this game. Jay Rodriguez comes in, he drifts in from wide and just finds the back of the net. There is no time left in this game, I don't think, for a goal, unless it's going to be something late and dramatic. Damari Gray, can he get the ball in the box? He can. 
cleared away. Drinkwater's not there. Tadic is going to carry it away to safety. And while well, with 10 seconds left and us not in possession of the ball. Although Drinkwater, go on. Why not? Schlup. This, why am I getting excited? It's finishing 2-2 here. A disappointing result in truth. Um, I said earlier, though, that perhaps Southampton would have been disappointed if they came away with nothing. They've got something from this game. We get a point. It does leave Tottenham really breathing down our necks. Of course, their next game is on a Saturday, as is ours against Sunderland. Let's get into that. Hopefully, we can destroy this hopes of Sunderland are staying up. They have got a game in hand at Newcastle, so they're certainly going to be playing for it. So, yeah, let's head over to the Stadium of Light and hopefully pick up a much-needed win. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second game of today's episode. We've gone up north. It's a drizzly day. 9 degrees centigrade in April. Not great. Hopefully, the football can be a little bit better on the pitch. And, uh, yeah, you can see here, looking at it, we are two points ahead, of course, of Tottenham. We're also four points ahead of Man City and four points ahead of Arsenal. But worth knowing, all of those teams with games in hand. And, actually, there is a Spurs game, which is going to be played right now as we hit continue. They're taking on Manchester United. Can we have a result go our way? Or have have I just... Let's find out. Let's find, let's find out. I'm now worried, actually, that I've hit continue too soon here. And um, that they've not actually played the game. In fact, no, I'm not... Am I, am I wrong? No, they've played the game. They won 2-0. Well, that's not great. Harry Kane and Son with the goals. Our game isn't actually, I don't believe, until tomorrow. So we can keep continuing now. But I felt like it was nice just to cover that game. As the results go in, of course, we'll keep an eye out for the Arsenal and Manchester City results. Looking at it here, Arsenal drawing 0-0. And uh, Manchester City evidently playing on the Sunday with us. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on here. Against Sunderland, really, I'm hoping for us to do a little bit more. Looking at it, Neil Swarbrick is going to Swarbrick is gonna be the, the referee. He's been pretty good with his cards. Only one given in 29 games. I'm hoping we can make something happen here. We need to make something happen. We need to apply pressure on Tottenham. If we lose this game in hand, Tottenham Hotspur, a point ahead of us, and with a game in hand, would really be in pole position to take the lead. and uh, Well, to take the league as a whole. In terms of the team, this is what we are going to go with. We are mixing things up. And uh, yeah, Maris is going to play as an inside forward. Vardy is going to play as a poacher. Ochoa is going to play as a target man. O'Brien going to be playing as a wide midfielder on attack. Both fullbacks switch to the support duty. I feel like Kante and Drinkwater have done fairly well in centre mid in their current role, so we're going to stick with them there. And of course, Schmeichel in goal. I'm hoping that after the last game, he can keep that level of performance going. It was a great game by him. And we're probably going to need him to. In terms of the Sunderland team, you can see their team there. They've got Jordan Pickford in goal. They've got Jermaine Defoe playing out on the right. A little bit unorthodox there. They've also got Ndoy playing as a striker. I must admit, the Sunderland team isn't particularly menacing. But then, given how terrible we've been going forward, we, we need an improved performance today. Let's see what we can make happen. Worth noting that Van Arnholt, uh, left back, seems to be playing a slightly more attacking role. I can tell by Jones's position on the 2D kind of thing here that he is a full-back set to defend. Van Arnholt looks like maybe a wing-back set to support. Either way, that might play into our hands a little bit because we have Mares playing out on the right for us. He's going to be in kind of a direct battle with Van Ar Arnholt there and uh, perhaps can even, you know, try and exploit the space in behind. Either way, let's try and just encourage the players here. As I said, a win at this point is necessary, really, if we want to have any chance at the kind of title, which, of course, we do. That was the aim in this save, to try and win the league. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, because I do feel like Everton... Uh, not Everton, sorry, Leicester are a little bit underrated in the league. But that, that said, it's really hard to make and kind of rate Leicester's team. Like, this summer, for FM17, how do you rate Leicester's team? Do you rate them as being the best team in the Premier League? Of course you don't. They're players... You know, they're, they're not proven to be the best players in the Premier League. But at the same time, you need them to be kind of challenging. Well, do you need them to be challenging for top four? That's what I was going to say. But then you don't know if that's where they're going to be next year. It's such a weird miss. Vardy's offside. Stop celebrating. God damn it. He finally scored and he was offside. Either way, let me, let me know. Where do you think Leicester will finish next year? And how do you think FM should rate them? I'm kind of curious to know what you guys think. I do feel like... I don't want to say they're necessarily underrated right now after the January update, but I don't. I feel like it'd be a struggle if you were to start a fresh save with the Leicester side to win the league, uh, kind of as Ranieri did. Whether or not that's testament to Ranieri as a manager or the fact the players were underrated, I'm not entirely sure. As I said, I feel like FM17 for Leicester City is going to be such an interesting one for how the players are rated. Either way, let's not focus on 2017. We need to focus on this year because Defoe's bringing it forward. They've had an effort. Schmeichel with what? An, well, an insane save there. I was about to say... Um, a lucky save. Makes another as well. Defoe from a yard out with the effort latching onto the end of that cross. I mean, we have been... Let's just let's just pause the game. We've been awful. We've been... Right. Reevaluate everything right now. We have been terrible in this game. 
and I need to work out what we're going to do here. And part of, me, part of me wants to just load up the narrow system and see what we can do with it. The Liverpool narrow system, play Maris as a Trek and see what you can do as a Trek Quartista. You know what, I think that's what we're going to do. And I think we'll bring in Amati for Albright. And Amati is a really good defensive midfielder, so you can slot in right there. We'll play Drinkwater as the Roman playmaker. Kante as box-to-box. -box. Let's go with this. I feel like this actually suits our team surprisingly well. Might also allow us to get Mahrez a little bit more into the game, playing him down the middle. Let's see how it goes. It can't go any worse than really the opening 35 minutes of this game. And, uh, well, although we've made this change, we do need to stay secure here. The tactical change hasn't even taken place yet. And, uh, well, Sunderland looked like they could score. Choa now might be able to play in Vardy. Kony gets it away now to foe with the ball. And, uh, well, until we get this 4-3-1-2, I'm not going to feel comfortable here. Sunderland with the ball and Doy lays it out wide to Kazari. He might look to whip it to the back post towards Jermaine Defoe, who's there. Larson and Villa in the middle. And uh, an extended period of possession here for Sunderland, who now drift inside Kazri. I mean, it would have been an insane goal had he hit the target and found the back of the net. He didn't, though. And, uh, yeah, we need to make some tactical changes. It's what we've done. We'll see how they work for us. It's been a, a pretty poor game so far, you'd have to say. And at halftime, it's actually going to be 0-0, but we're perhaps fortunate to be in this kind of situation. I feel like fundamentally, so far in this game, we have been outplayed by Sunderland. I do question, perhaps, how much playing this narrower system is going to help us kind of um, work against the kind of Sunderland system that they're playing. I feel like we're going to change the, the kind of width to wide. I feel like the wider centre mids for us do need to help cover kind of the, the wider areas perhaps, particularly over on that side where Van Arnold is. And, well, then Doy is through here. Schmeichel, can he save? No, he can't. And Doy with the goal makes it 1-0 to Sunderland. And we've been outplayed this game. We have simply put been outplayed. It is 1-0 to Sunderland. And um, it's been poor. It's been poor. You'd have to say Larson with the big ball up and Doy clean for one goal. Schmeichel stands up big. Can't get down to the save, though. Pretty well slotted away. And uh, again, we just don't look like scoring. And whether or not that's the fault of my players or my own stubbornness, I, I guess is up for debate. Let, let's change the system again. We're going to go to the 4 3 one, two that we've used very frequently in this year's FM. We've got to make something happen. I mean, Vardy's been so poor again. It's just it's disappointing at this point. Let's make some changes. We're going to bring Schlupp on on the left. We're going to bring Damari Gray on, on the right. And uh, let's see what these players can do. Let's see if they're up for a fight, because we need them to be tonight. I'm a poet. I didn't know it. I did know it. After the second rhyme, I decided to keep it going with the night one. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm holding up my hands now. I am genuinely sorry for those puns. Not even puns. Just terrible rhymes. Right. 30 seconds, 30 seconds left. That isn't a lot of time. 30 minutes left. Van Arnholt's clean through. If they make it 2 now, it's probably game over, because we don't look like scoring Kazri. His final action of the game is going to be to hit the side netting there. Barini coming on for him. I mean, we've just been we've been schooled this game. This is going to be a game which I have to look and review and try and work out what went wrong. If there was anything that we could really change, um, if we can rescue anything from this game now, it's going to be pretty fortuitous. You'd feel Sunderland twenty shots in this game. They've had so many more chances than us. I mean, it only takes us one chance to get a goal, but really, a draw at this point would be... I don't want to say it wouldn't be an, It wouldn't be a good result, but it really wouldn't be enough given the situation we know we're in with kind of Spurs leading the way at the top of the table here. Either way, two minutes left. And uh, we're not going to score again. It's going to finish 1-0, and... I mean, it's one of those situations where I don't really know what to do because I've not got the options to change. I guess the the real choice would be to start Schlupp. Either way, with five games left, we are suddenly kind of no longer the, the, the kind of leaders in the, the the division. You can see Jamie Vardy, he's now played eight matches without finding the net. It's not looking great, is it? And, uh, well, to make things worse, we've actually got West Ham next to, to be fair to them, have been free-falling a little bit in this save, so they might be a little bit of an easier team for us to play. Um, I don't know if we look at their past positions, if it'll actually work with this updated database. I assume it will. It'll probably start from halfway through the year, but if we look at West Ham's position... Oh, no, it doesn't. So um, you can see they've obviously been like in sick for a while, but they really have tailed off of late. They did draw, of course, against Arsenal in their last game, but they lost to Palace, drew with Chelsea, um, lost to Everton as well, I think. 
In terms of the other game we've got next episode, it is going to be against Swansea. We need wins in those games because I feel like if it goes down to Manchester United, Everton and Chelsea, we're in serious trouble. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed this episode, guys. We need to sort things out. Seven games played so far in this series. Three wins, three losses, one draw. Simply put, not good enough. Hopefully you guys will be around for episode five. Let's see if we can turn it around. I will see you guys then. If you've enjoyed, as I said, leave a like. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. Goldless Jamie Vardy is worrying me. Hopefully he's not worrying you. Let's see if he can score next time. I'm out.